The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, number 52. The Comforter has come. Now with Frank Baum, I can only find a uh, Methodist Episcopalian pastor. And from the study I find about, I don't know if there's two different men with the same name. But I find three different backgrounds of history. One does uh, unify our study for him is Methodist Episcopal. One has a man of the same name, Francis, that did work with Canadian Indians. One has work coming from, coming to America and going back home. But the comforter has come, according to the Gospel of John 14, chapter 15 and chapter 16. It's the Holy Spirit and it's a promise that Jesus comforted us that we will get a comfort when he leaves. And the hymn starts off, oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found. And that will go to the Bible that says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, which he done, and was buried, which he had. And he arose from the grave three days and three nights, which God has finished. And in Acts chapter 1, he ascended to the Father, and he's not going to be seen by the church until the rapture. When we meet him in the air, and he says in John 14, chapter 14 and 15, that when he goes, he's going to give us a comforter. And that comforter, the Holy Spirit, that indwells in those that believe, is found. So the prophecy, one of the prophecies of Jesus' life, not only that he told his disciples that, you know, they're going to, uh, I'm going to suffer, die, and three days and three nights, you know, going to raise his temple up, which has been fulfilled. A fourth prophecy is he's going to send the Holy Spirit to come and help us and comfort us. And it, it's come. So when we look at this hymn here, it's about the Holy Spirit. Wherever human hearts and human woes abound. So what I'm saying with Matthew 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel about Jesus Christ. This hymn says go out there and tell the comforters come. It is a comfort, and the rapture is a comfort, for Paul writes when it says with the rapture, comfort one another with what I just said about death and the possibility of not facing death to the rapture. And when we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and somebody receives Christ, then the comfort of the Holy Spirit comes and it dwells in them and makes us children of God. So not only is this hymn about the Holy Spirit, but it also puts the Holy Spirit as Jesus, and Jesus as the Holy Spirit, which they are of God. So you have a doctrine found in this hymn that the Trinity. And I would doubt that this hymn would be sung in a universal ser ser uh, service or among the Jehovah Witnesses, who deny the Trinity and deny the, the Lordship and Godship of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit. And when we go out and preach the gospel to hearts and woeful abound, there's one way to end their woes is through the salvation of Jesus Christ. That every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound, the comforter has come. Good news. You can receive the Holy Spirit of God through the testimony and the merits of Jesus Christ alone. And when you get the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ, look what you get. He comes and dwells with you. He's a comforter, yes. He will teach us all things, yes. He has nine fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And he puts your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and seals you as a child of God. And that's only a limited view of what the Holy Spirit will do for us. You know what that is? That's good news. The first good news is that Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And after you receive him, the better news is that the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity, comes and dwells with you. And oh, if I can say the package that comes with it, the benefits, a Bible word that comes with the Holy Spirit. 
The Bible says the Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us because we don't know how to pray. And we'll look at the chorus at the end. The long, long night is past, and morning breaks at last. And hush the dreadful wail, and fury of the blast. And o'er the golden hill, the day advances fast. The comforter has come. Our time here is only limited. If you were to stretch out a line for when man began at Adam to the last man, whoever, whatever that time will be, and you mark that thing off, Abraham and, her, and the patriarchs lived long lives, 500 years and up. But even that's nothing. What is 500 years to being 6,000 years already? What is my 50 going on 51 years? In the realm of a 500 year? 777 years. Our time is short, our end in the time that we have between birth and death, we must, Jesus said, have the new birth. We must do things for God to get rewards. And that Holy Spirit is not going to come to a worldly person. The, the world cannot receive the, hope, the comforter. They got to hear about the comforter. They got to hear about the gospel. And that comes from us Christians. Lo, the great King of Kings, Jesus Christ. But the hymn is about the Holy Spirit. And yet the King of Kings, Revelation 19, is Jesus Christ. And yet Thomas said, my Lord, my God, to Jesus and worship him. And Jesus did not say, hey, don't worship me. Joshua came up to the captain of the host and he fell down and worshiped him. And, and Jews don't worship men. And that man received the worship of Joshua, told him, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. That had to be Jesus. So, again, here is a hymn about the Holy Ghost proclaiming the Holy Ghost to be Jesus. And to be proclaimed as God. And God is Jesus, and God is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is God, and Jesus is, and all three are one. That's a doctrinal truth that you must believe. You cannot be saved and say that Jesus is not God. You cannot be saved and insult the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost had much workings in Jesus' life and ministry for the 33 and a half years that he was on this planet. Oh, boundless love divine. Oh, that, that finish three, oh, King of Kings with healing in his wings. The Old Testament scripture says that's God in Israel. We have King of Kings, Jesus Christ, Revelation 19. We have healing in his wings, the book of Psalms. One is the Jesus and one is the God. And the third is, the, is a hymn about the Holy Spirit. All three are one. Remarkable. To every captive soul, a full deliverance brings. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, that Holy Spirit comes and dwells. When that Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you and settles in you and becomes part of you and part of your life, He ain't never going to leave. You can deny the faith, but they're not going to deny you. Who are the we? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Once we're sealed with the Spirit, no one's going to break that seal. No one can break that seal. No one will break that seal. And through the vacant cells, the song of triumph rings. The comforter is gone. Glory to God the Father. Glory to what Jesus Christ has done. And glory to the, to the Holy Spirit and his doom. O boundless love divine. Shall I quote a scripture for that? 
We love him because he first loved us. That's Jesus. That's God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God commanded his love to us while we were at sinners, Christ died for us. How shall this tongue of mine to wandering mortals tell? Preach the gospel. It's easy to preach the gospel. I've been doing it many years. I've handed out many gospel tracts. It is very simple. Salvation is very simple. What's the hard part? Getting the lost to understand. We've been in our, our street public ministry for five years. The same people here, besides new ones that come around, but pretty much the same people have heard the same message. It's always about the gospel. It's always about Jesus. It's always about death. It's always about hell. It's always about heaven. And yet they will not do what, what the Bible and what God tells them to do. That's the hard part. Breaking that pride, that rock heart of wickedness to turn to God the Savior. And while you're preaching the word of God, the Bible speaks that the Holy Spirit is convicting their hearts. The Holy Spirit is tuning the ears to hear what that man is saying. Read what that track is saying. And yet the Holy Spirit, like God, is not going to force you. And you know the Holy Spirit works because by the attitudes of the people when they, when the gospel, however, is, is brought to them, and what sometimes their reaction comes back, anger. Now that is not what God wanted, but that's what mankind does. There's an attitude that comes back, Ignore. It'll go away. Again, that's not what God wants. And then there's denial and there is receiving. But the hardest thing of being a witness is to the hearts that are stoned against God. That have been soiled with religion and pride. That's the hard part. Any Christian get up and preach the gospel, it's commanded Mark 16. The seed that the sower puts up, just throw the seed out everywhere. You can leave a gospel track anywhere, as long as it's legal. You can proclaim Jesus anywhere, as long as it's legal. I can go to the stores of Walmart, proclaim the gospel of Jesus, and they're going to kick me out. But I can, you know, proclaim Jesus saves. That's simple. But try to try to get that that manager now angry with you and ready to throw you out. Try to get his heart broken. That's not our job. That's not my job. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And when they go against God and Jesus, what He has done, they're going against. The work of the Holy Spirit for salvation. And when a man rejects Christ, he is rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit that you need to hear, you need to listen. God is like, I don't want to put my wrath upon you. And Jesus is like, I've done it for you. There's nothing you can do. Found this up. How shall this tongue of mine to, how uh, how shall this tongue of mine to wandering mortals tell the matchless grace divine divine God you can't have salvation without Jesus you can't have salvation without the Holy Spirit you can't have salvation without God the gospel is not only that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is God sent his son. His son suffered and died for us and the Holy Spirit does the work of trying to convince. The Holy Spirit does the work of the man with the gospel. Jesus said he will prove the world, world of sin. There's two other things. I may have that up right now. Let me check. Check real quick here.
John 16, 8. The Holy Spirit. Start at verse 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I, Jesus, go away. For I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So when you receive Christ, you get that Comforter. And when he, the Comforter, has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. And of righteousness because I go to the, my Father and ye see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Listen, it's not you that convicts the sinner. It's you are a vessel. You are the inspiration of God saying this is what Jesus has done. And it's the Holy Spirit that sparks their ears to hear. It's their Holy Spirit that condemns them. Guilt and conscience to get right. It is their own being, their own free will to receive, reject, or shun. But when you see someone you are preaching to, you're teaching with the Bible, you've given a gospel check in there, and you see the tears. And you see their heart turning. That's not you. That's the Holy Spirit. Only a fool and man of pride would say, that's the work I've done. And people say falsely, look how many people I got saved. You didn't get anybody saved. The Holy Spirit did. By the finished work of Jesus, by God allowing them into the family. God's mercy, grace, and long-suffering for them to believe on the finished work of His Son that had been drawn to by the Holy Spirit. I, a child of hell, every lost man, I was a child of hell one, day, one time. I was my father the devil, John 8, 44. Do you imagine this hymn has included the word Hell? Oh, wow, that's not, that's not sung in your modern church today. This hymn would not be allowed to sing hell unless they change it. I even heard many, you know, Hades. It ain't Hades. Men don't say go to Hades, they say go to hell. Jesus said hell. If your Bible says Hades, you got the wrong Bible should in his image shine the comforter has come and you can't revel in the awesomeness of the greatness of the of the exciting ability of new words i'm making what the holy spirit can do for you in your life there's nothing more serving the lord and having a good time after that and going to any amusement park I mean, you can go to a music bar and get access first in line to all the attractions, and it can be all free. That ain't going to excite you like the Holy Spirit excites you when you do what God told you to do. When you walk away from a public ministry and you have walked in the footsteps of Jesus, Peter, James, John, Paul. Now that's exciting. The Comforter has come. And once he comes to you, he will never go. How's that? The Comforter has come. The Holy Ghost. There we go. Like I said, we did the refrain. We do it last. But that's what John 14 says. The Holy Ghost from heaven. The same place where Jesus came from, the Holy Spirit comes. The Father, God, promise given. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at this again. Hold on. Jesus says in, in John 14, 16, I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, John 14, 26. But who spoke about that comforter? Jesus. Who had the prophecy of the, of the comforter? Jesus. Who promised the disciples that the comforter was going to come? Jesus. Who is Jesus? God. Who did Jesus say 
that was going to provide a comfort to Father. That's a prophecy. That's a prom. That's one of those promises you can claim. Oh, spread the tidings, good news. That's what gospel means, good news. Wherever man is found, going all the world, preach the gospel. The comforter has come. Now, he's not a comforter to the world. They don't know what you're talking about. But how about talking to the brethren? Instead of baseball, theater, the movies, restaurant. How about talking to other brethren, Christians? About what the Holy Spirit has done for you and what He is doing. How's that for a testimony? The Comforter has come. Great song.